I am being targeted for elimination by former Emir of Kano, Lamido Sanusi, other Fulani elites, Benue Governor or Tom cries out. Hmm. Can you imagine this kind of thing now? So this saga is still ongoing. I thought by now everything would have settled, the dust would have settled and everybody should go his way. So because of the way um Otom has been you know, shouting about the things the Fulanese are doing to them in Benue, which is also the reason he refused to support uh, Atiku's presidency, um, has taken to a different level. Um, at a point, I remember uh, Sanusi and some other Fulani elites were clamoring for his arrest or something like that. But today, this man is coming out now to say that, uh, you know, he's been targeted for elimination especially by the former Emir of Kano, Lamido Sanushi, and some other Fulani elites. So let's see what uh, Otom has more to say about this allegation, because I think it is an allegation. Okay. The governor specifically mentioned the former Emir of Kano, Lamido Sanusi, as one of those who leveled all manner of accusations against him in an attempt to set him up for hatred, verification, vilification, and attacks. Governor Samuel Otom has alleged that he is being targeted to be killed by those he described as group of Fulani elites. Otom disclosed this in a press conference address, press conference address whose texts were made available to Sarah reporters on Thursday. The governor specifically mentioned the former Emir of Kanola Middle Sanusi as one of those who leveled all manner of uh, manners of accusations against him in an attempt to uh, set him up for hatred, vilification, and attacks. He said, My attention was drawn to a write up signed by 52 personalities of Fulani extraction led by the deposed Emir of Kano, Lamido, uh, Lamido Sanusi in form of a letter to Mr. President in which the group leveled all manner of accusations against me in a desperate attempt to set me up for hatred, vilification, and attacks. The group, which refused to give itself a name, accused me of being responsible for the recent killing of some pastoralists at uh, Akwanaja Doma local government area of Nasarawa State via a bomb attack. They tried to link the Benue State Livestock Guard with the killings, claiming that the pastoralists were bombed on their way from Benue to Nasarawa after they had retrieved their cattle. The group maliciously accused me of carrying out genocide against pastoralists. The dethroned Emir Sanusi did not stop at that. He made a video in Hausa in which he maligned me and called on all Fulani to consider me as their enemy while urging those in Benue State to vote against me during the coming elections. I consider these allegations and blackmail targeted at my person and the government of Benue State as part of a grand conspiracy by enemies of the state to eliminate me. Since 2017, when we enacted the Open Grazing Prohibition and Ranches Establishment Law, I have escaped seven assassination attempts. Can you imagine? Those behind the evil plots have not hidden their motive. They have made me an enemy for choosing to stand with my people and defending their rights to live and freedom. You will recall that on the 20th of March 2021, I was attacked by Tayo Mu along Makodi Boko Road by headsmen. And after the attempt on my life, a group named Fulani Nationality Movement, FUNAM, issued a press statement taking responsibility for the assassination attempt. They said I escaped because of a technical error, but that I won't be lucky another time. They vowed to get me at all costs. The recent utterances of some personalities, such as Lamido Sanusi, have revealed the true identities of those behind the sinister agenda to eliminate me, but my life is in the hands of God and only he can permit anything evil to come my way. 
our livestock guards operate within the boundaries of Benue State and are not permitted by law to bear arms, their function is to help conventional security agencies in enforcing the law which protects both the farmer and the herder. The guards have become target of attacks by armed henchmen, with many of them killed in cold blood. Benue State livestock guards do not rustle cattle. They legitimately impound cattle which are seen violating the law and take them to the quarantine unit for the period stipulated by law. He urged those castigating him unjustifiably to note that headsmen attacks on farmers in Benin State uh, date back to 2009. However, 2011 was when the attacks assumed a dreadful dimension with widespread killings, injury and displacement of farmers from their ancestral homes. He continued, the Benin State came under attack nearly 50 times before the law was enacted. My predecessor, Senator Gabriel Soswan, was nearly killed by Fulani Kingsmen in 2014, Hessmen in 2014, at Wickman on his way to Tokula village in Guma local government area to see the damage caused by Hessmen in the community. When I was voted as governor in 2015, my people who are predominantly farmers requested for a policy that would not only end hostilities and attacks on them by nomadic herdsmen, but would also allow both parties to peacefully coexist. As a result, the State Executive Council sent a bill to the State House of Assembly and the Open Grazing Prohibition and Ranches Establishment Bill was passed by the House of Assembly on 4th May 2017, after public hearings were held in the three senatorial districts of the state. The law was enacted by representatives of the people in the Benue State House of Assembly in exercise of its powers as provided for by Section 4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. Part 2 of the second schedule reinforces the power of the State House of Assembly, okay, providing that a House of Assembly may make laws for the state with respect to industrial, commercial, or agricultural development. Fulani Hessman attacks on my people in the last couple of years have caused a devastating humanitarian crisis, resulting in the killing of over 6,000 Benue people and the displacement of about 2 million others, with many living in internally displaced persons' uh, uh, IDP camps. Oh, wow. So this is, the tomb is giving narratives of how this thing has taken turn from 2015, from 2014, and from 2009. And it's been something else. And up to now, that uh, attack, rather than going down, has actually taken a very serious dimension. And how long will this continue to be? Frankly speaking, I give kudos to Otum. Otum is the only governor in the country that has been shouting about this Fulanization agenda, the headsman agenda, and the you know the plan of the Fulanese to collect farmland from the from the landowners, more like land grabbers because of their cattle grazing. And the man has been, you know, outspoken since then till now. And that is leading to attempt on his life. They are even attempted, made attempt on the life of his, uh, of his predecessor, Governor Suswan, before his own as well. And his own too, they've made attempts, but they've not gotten him. But then the people have, you know, decided to make sure that they control the activities of headers in the state in order to curb the menace of the headsmen in the state. So that, that is the decision they have made. But the attempt on his life is actually unacceptable. Unfortunately, full and knees uh, killing is their hobby. You know, they don't see anything wrong in taking another person's life. That is one bad part of, uh, of their lifestyle. So, but it's good this man is speaking out now so that everybody will know exactly what is happening. Some person here said that, uh, somebody is making a comment that some person here said that he has lost all respect for Sanusi Lamido. Um, I second that, that view and assertion. When you take people as civilized, then they would come out to disappoint. This is a height of disappointment. Here is Lamido, who was once a CBN governor, and many Nigerians, you know, sided with him 
when he had a running battle with Jonathan's government. Here is Lamido, who was once an emir of Kano, but was merely picked by the shirt collar and thrown out uh, out through the window like an errant errant urchin. Lamido chickened out of Kano after that and sought refuge with the uh, Earl Five. So Lamido Sanusi, or uh, whatever name they call him, your antecedents have shown that you are a troublemaker, at least from your stint in need. Can you imagine? Sanusi has superiority complex. Okay, megalomania running in his bloodline. Strangers in Nigeria who stole crowns and identity of the houses. Fulani's end is near the retrogressive tribe. That is it. That is it. He doesn't have a superiority complex. He is superior. Get used to it. There is no hit, uh, uh, hated tribe that is retrogressive. Tribes are usually hated, envied because they are superior. Can you imagine? This must be a full and person that is talking. Not really. Somebody said, I hear you. Not Sanusi's fault, but his forebearer. He has been pinned to where he rightly belongs. The class of dethroned obas. Okay? May he never rise. <laughs> I was already saying again. Sanusi has never depended on your respect to try. You can keep it. Can you imagine? Somebody said, you are very correct, but he got to a, pro, a prominence via jihadist training camp. You see? So his record, the one thing about Nigeria is that they will keep your record for you. And when the time comes, they will play it back for you as well. So it let you know that they know you more than you think you know yourself. So thank you for listening. That is what Tom is saying, that they are making an attempt uh, on his life and they are still making an attempt on his life. On his life. And it, this attempt is being led by the former deposed Demi of Kano, uh, Sanusi Lamido.